When I first applied to Mattel, I was actually looking for a summer job. I was 17 at the time, was just graduating high school, and I'd done some games, and I actually had one in, in publishing at the time. And it just so happened that Mattel was actually looking for college grads they were recruiting, and they mistook the name of my high school for the name of a college nearby, and decided to bring me out to California to interview me. So I came out and uh, went in for the interview, and was very surprised that the recruiter, Robin Ekman, um, looked very puzzled and uh, almost disturbed when she first saw me sitting there waiting, went into her office and over the next uh, half hour, a series of people in suits went in and out of her office, always pausing to look at me. Um, after half an hour, she started the interview and explained that they had thought I was graduating from college. But uh, we completed the interview and I actually went on to meet the hiring manager and then his boss later that day. And uh, a week later, I actually got a job offer from them. I guess they created a new category for me called junior programmer. And uh, I, about a month later, what, after I'd actually turned 18, I actually started work at Mattel. Uh, why I went to Mattel? Well, I had, it did take me a long time to get out of college. I think I graduated nine years after high school. And I finally got a degree in computer science. And I said, well, OK, I sent out my resume. I still have the book, 100 companies that I sent my resume out to. And in this book, it says, you know, on this date, I sent my resume to Mattel. Well, that same week, I had gone to Litton Industries, and I had interviewed there, and, you know, it was very stuffy and very corporate, and it was right in Beverly Hills. So I, I went there, and it seemed like it was reasonable, and then I went to Mattel, and I was the first person that, that they had hired someone in HR to hire all of the programmers, Sybil, and I was the very first person that she hired. And I think we, as everyone remembers, we took a little test, or we called it a quiz, because you're not allowed to test employees. Uh, and it just, it, was, it felt like the atmosphere was good. So it was an easy decision. And I think they, I, the, the pay was enormous. It was at least twenty, twenty-three thousand dollars $23,000. So it's a lot of pizza. <laughs> hey, well, I've, I've, I've heard other people describe it as one of the funnest jobs they've ever had, and I have to uh, concur with that. Um, the people that were there were exciting and fun. The, the technology we were working on was, was fun. 
Um, and I think part of it was that as we encountered lots of adversity towards the end, I think that helped uh, the team pull tightly together. Uh, when I was there, I saw the company grow from 30 people to uh, over 2,000 people and then shrink back down to, uh, before the last layoff, we were down to probably back to 30. Um, and, and during that time, watching people weather the storm and pull together was, was pretty exciting. I really enjoyed Snafu. That was my favorite game. I worked on that by myself. And uh, the only thing I didn't like about it was the name that marketing picked for it. I had no idea what Snafu had to do with it. I originally called it Snakes with a bunch of S's on the end. And all I could see that was similar was it started with SNA and Snafu. But it was a fun game. Tell at a job fair. And when you came in, they, uh, they gave you a name tag that was color coded. So you had it on, it was either programming or you were a hardware person or uh, you were marketing. And so I'm in there and it's in the Mattel cafeteria, a lot of people mingling around, uh, looking at the video games that they had set up. And this, this dapper Englishman, his coat and tie came up to me and said, uh, excuse me, I, I see you have the, uh, the, the programming name badge on. Now, uh, are you available for all types of programming, uh, for accounting or for payroll? Or or are you just here because you think it would be fun to program games? <laughs> and um, I thought about it for a second and decided to tell him the truth that uh, really I was just there because I thought it would be fun to program games. And he went, ha, ah, very good, very good, please come over here and sit down with me. Uh, it turns out this was Gabriel Baum who was uh, in charge of the Intellivision programming department and anybody that he asked that question who said that they were available to do accounting or any other programming just he, he wouldn't talk to him. That's it. He only wanted people who were there to program games. One of the, one of the, one of the strangest memories I have about Mattel, it just really kind of showed <laughs> the way this thing went up and down, um, was the day they announced we were going to get a bonus based on sales, kind of a royalty plan. Uh, we're going to get six cents. Programmers were going to get six cents for each one of the cartridges sold that they programmed. And a group of us went over to the to the nearby mall for a break that afternoon. And, and there was an ice cream shop there, and we all got the ice cream. We were sitting on the on the patio, and we were just all going, "This is it. This is it. We're all going to be rich now. This is this is wonderful." And uh, a Porsche drove by, and and one of the people in the group said, ah, "I'm I'm going to get me a Porsche." And, and everybody kind of got wistful, kind of going, oh yeah, you know, you know, now we're just going to be able to, we're going to be rich, we're going to be able to buy whatever we want, and uh, it's it's just, you know, it's not going to be that struggle anymore. And, and it was almost like we were sad that we were just going to be, have so much money and everything that's like, oh, that's it, all the, all the hard times are past us, and oh, is it is it going to be as much fun when you're just going to be able to be able to buy whatever you want? Yeah. <laughs> you know. And of course, six months later, we were all out of work. So. The the funny thing about hearing people talk about Mattel now is is over and over again, people say, "That's oh, the best job I ever had. I, that was the most fun. It was just terrific." And my recollection is when we were actually there, it was just constantly people bitching and moaning about everything. Yeah. I, 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 I'm in a cubicle. I want to have an office. We don't have walls. We don't have doors. Uh, the marketing doesn't know what they're doing. How come they're releasing the game this way? How come they're releasing it this way? Uh, there's too much interference in the game design. You know, I want to do this and, and I want to work on this project, but I have to work on Aquarius and I want to do in television and, and this person's making it was just constant just constant complaints about everything and even the people who weren't complaining that much there were still you know there's people say oh I, I never complained but but still they were all interviewing I mean there were headhunters everywhere and all the companies Atari and, and Coleco and Sega everybody was was looking for programmers so even the people who were happy were, were out flying all over the country interviewing with other companies so it's 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 funny now to hear people talk about how great it was when everybody had you know one foot out the door and was uh, was going but at, at the same time it's not really a contradiction because I think that really looking back at it uh, it was the best time for a lot of people and I think that that's because simply even with all the complaining everything there was just such a passion about what we were doing I mean, it was just you know video games but uh, but everybody was really just so it was it was 
their life at that time. It was just really uh, caught up in it and really, um, I can say, the, just the, the passion for every day of, of, of working at, at, uh, at Mattel and working with the people that uh, we had there. It was just, uh, it was tremendous. So it was like, say, a lot of hard work and a lot of, a lot of complaining and a lot of, lot of nonstop agony but um, it was, it really was a time when you just really felt alive and that you were doing, you really knew what you were doing every day. Uh, oh, yeah. And then, and then you were, your job was to post it on the bulletin board. Oh, yeah. No, well, I was working for the college. I was working for Pomona College at the time in their computer center. And uh, we got a notification from a career planning office uh, that uh, Mattel was looking for programmers. Uh, Don Daglow, who had also gone to Pomona College, notified the college. So the career planning office sent me a memo saying, oh, would you please post this uh, for students? And I looked at it and said, post it for students, forget it, I'm going to go apply for this thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, uh, one thing particularly about the games written at that, at that time was that they were, the cartridges were so small that there were no assets to connect to the game. A, a programmer would just, you know, there's so few gra graphics, you get it all hooked up, and the only thing really left to work on is the gameplay. Uh, so out of the three months, maybe the three to six months that had been in development, um, uh, a great deal of that time was just sitting down playing a game and going, hmm, was that fun? Could that have been better? And just working on the gameplay algorithms. And nowadays, it's, uh, so much of it is just connecting everything to the game engine. Uh, that's one thing that I, I always recognize with these algorithm style games, that um, it, it has a lot to do with there just weren't that many things you could hook up to it. So it just had to be good, good programming. Actually, I guess uh, the um, working on the Intellivision or the INTV product line was a lot more focused uh, because it was just two or three people on each game max, and um, you know we weren't in a floor of 60 people trying to make a game. It was just you know me over at Steve's house or somebody over at my place, and um, so th I think that was just a, it was probably a lot more concentrated uh, effort on each game. Um, less of the kind of team effort and just more focus. But then we were trying to do like four games a year per person, uh, which was just a lot more grueling to schedule too. Oh yeah, uh, there were a lot of complainers. And, um, people would, uh, I remember one offsite we had about, oh, the tools couldn't do this, the tools couldn't do that. And I'm just going, come on, just write the game. Just write the dang game already. Um, I do also remember like when I was in the fourth grade, my family was on a vacation driving through Los Angeles for the first time. I'm staring out the back seat of a station wagon and uh, we drove down the 405 and there's this big Mattel sign and at that point in time it dawned on me, you mean people get paid to make toys? And uh, I was just thinking, just looking at that, that, that very same Mattel building that we never worked in, uh, but, um, but just recognizing that people's jobs were to sit there and you know, get paid to have fun and make, make things for other people to play with. And I, you know, what was it, 10 or 12 years later, I actually got a job at the same building next door.